right. Let's see. Okay, today I'm doing Russian uh, prison portraits from uh, Cold Archive Instagram. They have some really cool portrait series on there. And this one is, uh, the caption was talking about how the Russian prisons have these kind of pretty wallpapers, which is kind of strange, especially if you're used to the uh, American system, which is pretty, uh, like the opposite of this, I guess, in tone. <laughs> It's cool. I've seen... I don't know where it was. It's like some Nordic country. Their prison... A documentary on their prison system and it seemed very different. Like, the prisoners were allowed to have knives and stuff and just hang out and... It's kind of like more... More of a rehabilitation center than a... And like prison, like how we think of prison. It makes a lot of sense. Because the US prisons are like punishment centers. But then the some countries they they treat the prison like, okay, we're gonna put people in there so they can get better and then they can kind of recover from whatever caused them to go in the first place. And then when they leave, they'll be able to, you know, reintegrate. Yeah. But it's true, like, does punishment actually work as well as uh, rehabilitation would work? Netherlands, oh, okay. Maybe that's where it was. Cells are better than college dorms. And, like, do you know if that system works? Like, do people come out of those in better shape? I mean, it seems like it would work, but I'm just curious if anybody has firsthand. Well, maybe not first-hand experience, but <laughs> if you've heard anything about about it.
Why don't you follow the system, Norway? Netherlands was closing down the prisons due to low population, so I'm, so yeah, I guess it, it is it is working. It's working too well. <laughs> well. I mean, it's working perfectly. That's great. Meanwhile, over here in the good old USA, where our prisons get bigger and bigger, and uh, more and more crowded. that you have no first-hand experience though. <laughs> Has anyone here in the chat gone to jail or ever been arrested? no new version right now I mean there's 1.3.9 which was like last week but I'm probably gonna be publishing another version soon because there's uh, another little batch of uh, things that have just been fixed and there's also this new tool here um, I'm calling it Phil Lasso for now I think Somebody suggested that and kind of makes the most sense. And uh, the other names were, were more fun, but I think Phil Lasso, it, um, it actually describes it the best. So I'm just going to use Phil Lasso. Nobody's been in jail. Well, I guess the closest thing I've I've been to I've been suspended from school. That's probably the closest, but never been to jail. Never been arrested, thankfully. Has anyone ever been close to being arrested? Maybe maybe you guys are still on the run. I don't know. I never know with you. YouTube chat is usually a shady bunch. got into a slap fight once. Oh, that's fun. What happened? How did you get into a slap fight? <laughs> oh man, I was just watching the the slapping like world championships the other day on YouTube. It's like these gigantic Russian dudes just slapping the shit out of each other. One, like, it's like arm wrestling championship, except they slap and they put chalk on their cheeks. It's brutal.
What's it like developing an app used by so many people? Well, um, still feels small to me. I feel like, um, I mean, it's uh, the same as developing an app for not that many people. I mean, it's still very small compared to any of the other drawing apps, so I'm lucky that, um, not like a huge amount of pressure or anything. But, um, but I still take it pretty seriously, I'm working on it every day, trying to fix stuff. And the nice thing about having a, a smaller uh, group of people using it is like I can kind of be more, I don't know, I, when people have bugs and stuff, I can spend a lot of time just, you know, talking to them and figuring it out together, so it's cool. And I think people are into, they like that it's, it's a small thing. You know, it's kind of like the underdog type thing. It's a little baby project. Because there's lots of big players. So... So when you find something like a small little program, it's kind of cool. Like, oh wow. It's a little discovery kind of a thing. I don't know. That's how I usually feel when I find a new program, I kind of want to share it with my friends and stuff. So I'm glad that people are doing that with heavy paint. Hey John. Oh man. How's it going? Phil. I see you. You're right there. <laughs> Michelle's like sitting right behind me. Ah, cool man. Working on top secret stuff. Um, let's see, Sketchy Tiger says, then is an ability for users to make their own brushes. Yeah, that's um, that's on the to-do list for sure. Exciting. 
Are you gonna do be doing some more like uh, lunch paints? I miss when everyone like like uh, Nick and Aaron Monick and you and everybody was doing those lunch lunch paintings making everyone feel bad about themselves <laughs> I miss that got finished with Plain April this last month and and some of the Plain April people are already doing May sketch a day or whatever or Mermay there's so many challenges now it's crazy my friend was saying that we should do um, heavy paint challenges like I don't know like um, do a painting all with one brush or or just like a black and white painting or no eyedropper challenge or something like that oh good night Notara because and and that would be really easy to do with heavy paint because you can you can check the stats here so you can see on this painting, there's 208 strokes are Phil Lasso, 12 are airbrush noise. It shows you how many points you did, how many strokes. We need to add in like recording of uh, like eyedropper, like how many times you do eyedropper maybe would be good, a good stat. Challenge using limited palette. Yeah. It could be cool maybe if there was like like a physical limit on the sliders, <laughs> maybe. You can't go past a certain point on the bar. I don't know. Or like a color gamut limit limiter thing. how that would work. Learning to pay for Spider-Verse. Well, Spider-Verse style is basically this guy named Alberto Mielgo and um, it's very flat and graphic and uh, punchy. Yeah, I'm, I've been a big fan of his stuff and, and that style for a while, so I've kind of been used to it. Um, I've been working with him for since 2012-ish, and um, yeah, so he, he always uses that style on all his projects. So everyone that paints on those projects kind of has to do it. <laughs> do the graphic style. But but it's just like this. It's just making flat shapes, and then 
a little bit of blending here and there but not too much modeling not too much rendering just just putting um, big color shapes in but yeah I'm not really one of the workhorse painters like there's guys that um, we work with that can do really finished paintings really fast and they're just super pros at it I'm kind of more of a hybrid guy to do some 3d and do some painting Yeah, since the first project was Tron Uprising. The thing that would be cool to add is a mixer palette where people can store colors while working on a painting. Yeah, but where would that go, Sketchy Tiger? Like, especially on a phone? I don't know if there's enough space for that. And the other thing, my kind of argument, my counter argument against the palette is that you already have a palette here like your entire workspace is a palette of colors that you're using so you can just eyedrop your existing colors and just eyedrop them so what's the benefit of having a whole nother copy of a palette somewhere else that's going to block your screen especially i mean i agree that it can be helpful but there is a downside to having it, you know, it takes up space. So it has to be more helpful than it is hurtful. But I don't know. If if you guys can convince me then I'll I'll put it in. I just I'm not convinced yet <laughs> on if it's useful enough to, to go in. How long would it take Alberto to do a painting like the Cityscape Spider-Verse one? Those are like a few weeks, you know, th those take a long time because every single window is, you know, different. Every single little thing and there's an entire freaking city, so it, it takes a good amount of time. few weeks, maybe a month, I think, don't quote me, but I remember him working on that one for a long time, <laughs> and then it takes even longer to do it in 3D, so yeah, that shot took, that, that jumping off of the building shot actually took us about a year to do the 3D test for. And that really freaked out the executives because that's very expensive and a long time, but anyway. Okay, so using it for gamut painting or color challenging, I think maybe um, 
I mean, you could totally do that. Just, just put a couple of swatches up here on your painting. And then pick from those. But yeah, maybe maybe we could have limits on the sliders, like a lower and an upper limit that you can set so that you stay within a certain range. Uh, we also have this down at the bottom of a painting. If you if you click on where it says save to page, it shows you the colors that you have inside the in the painting by stroke. I'm not sure how useful that is, but actually it should I feel like it should show more blue. Cheat a little bit and use opacity here. It makes me feel dirty. I, feel like I need to take a shower now using opacity. Hi, Bruno. Limits on the sliders and the in the color picker, I think, would be cool. That I'm more willing to do because there's not really any any downside to doing that. I feel like the brow, um, his eyebrow should be softer a little bit. It's too crispy. So I'm using fill gradient to soften it. the cheek, um, or I guess the meaty, soft gradients, like right there. Maybe the cheek. Let's 
try and read. I'm going to try um, follow rotation on the rig so it goes in the direction of the stroke.
Okay, Luke says, when did you start learning about programming? So, I started learning um, because of 3D programs. I was using uh, Modo and Blender. And those programs, you can modify them in little ways. Like, you can make your own menus and stuff and make macros and scripts. Um, with uh, a little bit of programming, like Python. So... Yeah, basically I learned I learned Python so I can make scripts and menus for Blender. And then it just went out from there. And Heavy Pain is mainly written in a language that's based on Python, so it's it's basically Python. And Python is like one of the easiest languages to learn. It's super user friendly. So if you guys are curious about programming, you should look at Python. I think it's also Dutch and also open source. Something about Dutch uh, stuff, it's like Blender and Python are, I guess, similar in that way. I guess it's all the all the people that recovered from being in prison, maybe some of those guys made these cool programs, who knows. Yeah, that's the other thing, like, with prison is but all the wasted potential, too. If you don't read, people never get back into the Society. What if one of those guys or girls could have been the next uh, Elon Musk or whoever? And I think like criminals and entrepreneurs are similar in that they both don't want to have a job and they both like try to figure out ways around the system, kind of. Yeah, exactly. It's the D. It's the DIY, do-it-yourself spirit. I think that's like that's strong in both criminals and and uh, entrepreneurs. They both like kind of want to do it themselves. Uh, just one is like punished and one is praised, but it's similar. What I'm trying to say is like, yeah, potential.
I'm surprised that nobody here has ever gotten arrested. Has anyone ever gotten in trouble at school? Like, or Is, I, I feel like this is still like sort of morning ghost. <laughs> it's not really, but yeah, I, I do miss that. I got a lot of stuff to fix with heavy paint jobs, so not as much time. Got forcefully dragged out of school to bar to a barber to get my hair cut by vice principal. What? What was your haircut like? Must have been pretty offensive. too long in South Africa, in colonial South Africa. Thank you. 
past your ears. Oh wow. Different time, Did I look up what this guy's in for? I don't know. No idea. Um, how much do you think about color? I don't know. But, uh, hmm, good question. I don't know. Color and value is like the same thing. Because these, these sliders here is 1 to 0 in value for red, green, and blue. So, it's like I have three value sliders here basically. Maybe there. That's my Jedi mind tricks way of answering your question. Color is value. You can also go down to this corner, the black and white the BW. And check that out. Some people have been doing like like this where they. Guess what color they have. And then at the end, you, you take a peek and it's a little bit of a surprise. Last one is blue and green, so I kind of 
feel like I know what I'm doing. Probably not gonna look like right. Kind of like the one where I was blind more figures. colors. I'm just getting lazy reusing it. Reusing
big L. Today, guys, this update here with the new fill tool should be out soon. It's called Fill Lasso, so keep an eye out for that. Um, okay. yeah, yeah, it's replay time. Skip. Let me just make sure that the export works okay. Curious how big this PNG will be.
size, okay. Wow, PNG sizes vary wildly depending on how, um, depending on what type of brushes you have, because if it's like flat color, the PNGs are small size, but I guess this one just has a lot of gradients in it, which is making everything, and all this noise everywhere is making it go crazy. Okay, you get the idea. Thanks for joining in again. See you all next time. Have a good day.